everyone. It is just two weeks to BKB 27 on Saturday, the 23rd of June. I am with the charismatic, enigmatic fighter they call the Athenian, Jack McLean. Good to see you, mate. How are you? Very good to see you, Paolo. I'm doing well. It's a lovely afternoon here in Croydon. We're just relaxing. We've been training earlier this afternoon and now we're just relaxing before we go off to church this evening and then off to another training after that. Lovely. Nice busy. Keeping calm, keeping in good mind, keeping good body. That's it. That's it. Staying alpha. <laughs> Great shape. Now we're going to have a quick chat and then we're going to leave a message for your opponent later on. But first of all, let's start with your debut at BKB24, a fight that I really enjoyed. We just had a quick chat about it then. You really captured the eyes of the of the crowds on your debut and you really stood out, I thought, as a debutant. Tell me about that first fight. Yeah, well, like I say, um, you know, it was a tough fight. Um, I mean, I'd done a couple of bare knuckles before here doing the hay bale fights, but no one as uh, good as Ellis Shepard, you know, a very experienced knuckle fighter. It's a lot different in the ring, you know, and um, like I said, it's the experience thing, you know, he just had the edge on me. I remember I was very confident coming in. I thought, oh, you know, I'll annoy him. He seemed like quite an angry type of guy. I thought, oh, make a couple of videos about him. We'd had a little bit of talking online. Now some of his fans messaging me things and all of this craziness. So I thought, you know, I'll message him, make a video to annoy him. He seemed quite an angry type of guy, very serious. And so I thought, you know, if I annoy him, it, it might draw him into a fight because I knew he was going to be quick footwork, better movement and everything like that. So I thought if I draw him in, I'd come in heavy, I come in feeling really strong. I knew if I can land a couple of good right hands, he'll be out of there. But he's just so elusive, so quick. You know, uh, it, it, it backfired, really. I thought he'd come in tearing up and then it's going to be 50-50, whoever lands that bomb. But, um, you know, he was far superior. I remember he just throwing a jab, flipping a jab again and again, bust him up my eyes up in his corner shouting, you know, and again, oh. it was literally like the flogging. Like I'd said, yeah. it was a flogging in the ring, you know, I remember it uh, very clearly. And then I made one mistake. I had my head on the line. I was coming forward. I put my head on the line for, you know, one second too long, leaning in and boom, he hit my right hand straight in my eye and it split my vision. It was like a psychedelic experience. There was two Ellis Shepherds, you know, dancing in front of me. And I immediately I panicked then. I was like, what's yeah. happened? I thought, I thought my eye had been split. Yeah. Like the Bible. That's what I thought. I was, oh my gosh, I'm going to be blind now. You know, and I was backing up then immediately. And then he attacked me. I tried to hold on, hoping my vision will come back. It didn't really come back. And then until he put me down, I got up. I came back a bit. But he'd done my other eye as well now, and he broke my nose, uh, you know, all in within about one round. So I was, like, in a really bad position, and it was all downhill from there, really. But great fight. I much respect to him. I've been, been talking to him since, and we was going to meet. I went to his gym. Unfortunately, he wasn't available that day, but he's met his team, great people, and I wish him all the best in his career. Who knows? The future, maybe we'll meet again one day, you know? Who knows? No one knows the future, so... You know, but it's a great um, experience. I feel really now much ready for the next one now I, after that, especially the eye thing, like the split. Because I'd read that in a um, book, a boxing book, Harry Gred versus, I think, Gene Tunney. Mm -hmm. He talked about, I think it was Gene Tunney or Jack Dempsey, one of them. He had the split vision yeah. where that happened. And then Harry Greb was, he remembered Harry Greb coming at him and he had the split vision and... I was reading it and then he said he's going back to the corner drinking orange juice and whiskey, you know, trying to hope his eyesight comes back, you know. But that eye thing, I think many fighters may have had it where your vision literally it splits in half. It's literally a psychedelic experience in the ring. Scary. You know? Obviously, one jack yeah. one, one But now I know down. that happens. I'm more used to it. If that was to happen again, it wouldn't bother me so much, you know. I think I'd be able to start even practicing using one eye and use these sorts of things, spinning round and then sparring. There's loads of different things you can do, you know, to prepare yourself for that mentally. 
sounds to me you've come out of that debut much stronger than going in. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's like I said, bare knuckle is it's like you gain much more experience from being in there fighting because you can do as much sparring with gloves, you know, but until when you take, because obviously you don't, some people crazy, they say, oh, you, how do you spar? You spar without gloves then? And I'm thinking, you're mad. <laughs> you know, no, you know, 16 ounce gloves, you know, use some headgear and you do your sparring, but nothing can prepare you for when you haven't got the gloves. So it's, it's an experience thing, you know, like Ellis Shepard, he had loads, you know, when he was young. He grew up with a lot of gypsy. I went down there to Camberley, you know, where the, where the White Royal Ascot was on. You know, it's all lots of, you know, gypsy people and all of this type. So they're more cultured mm-hmm. to the bare knuckle. Whereas I'm very new to this. You know, I've been doing kickboxing and boxing a very long time. But I never really, I mean, if you have street fights when you're younger, but it's a whole lot different than, you know, another athlete having a proper uh, boxing match is a whole different thing. So it's experience that counts. So that's why you got like these guys as Sean George, yeah. you know, who they, they could take so much punishment. Maybe they've got no nerves left in their face or something. I don't know, but I think that's incredible. Hopefully that will happen to me. You know, maybe my nerves will disappear over time. Hopefully not. Like I, I like to stroke my face and things, you know, <laughs> feel it. But, it's part of the game, isn't it? It's a tough sport. Absolutely. And the fun facts about Sean George, in it, 22 fights, I think he's had, never broke his hands once. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think that's very important as well, the hands. You've got to condition the hands, you know. So I do do the press-ups in the knuckles. I, I do hit the bags bare knuckle at, at sometimes as well. And I do different techniques you can use. So it all comes into play. So speaking of your training and you're just talking about there how it's difficult, even though with all your combat history experience, combat mm. sport experience, what is the, you found it difficult to transfer to bare knuckle, nothing can prepare you for bare knuckle. Why don't you tell us a bit about the experience in combat sport you have before bare knuckle? Tell us a bit about how you got into it, how old was you when you started, what sports, the kickboxing, boxing? Well, yeah, so I started uh, training kickboxing. I, I'd always been into martial arts as a kid. I loved Jackie Chan. Yeah. I used to watch the Jackie Chan movies, and I used to think, wow, I, I'd love to be able to do that. You know, jump off buildings and, you know, beat up 10 guys at once. So I always said to my parents, I want to do it. So I started doing the jiu-jitsu, traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu. I really enjoyed it. And then um, I remember I went to a school in Surrey, and I'd moved schools. So I, I used to go to a, a good, quite posh school, a private school in Royal Russell, it was called, in Croydon. And then I went there till I was about sort of 12, maybe. And then my parents couldn't afford it anymore. So me and my sister, we'd moved out anyway down to Surrey. Then we moved to a school called the Warwick in Red Hill, you know, a lot more sort of, lot of, sort of gypsy people and they tough, hard men type guys. And I'm always being outspoken character, so I used to get in a lot of fights all the time. And it was literally a boxing. That's how I was first started boxing. You call you out. I remember, you know, a kid say, "Come on, we're fighting after school all day." I'll have incredible anxiety, thinking, "Oh, now I'm going to have to turn up at the back gate and fight this guy twice my yeah. size." And I remember, I did always lose, but I never turned down the fight. I get smacked up. And then I thought, you know, enough is enough. This Japanese jujitsu rubbish is not working. You know, <laughs> all of this bit of thing, <laughs> these blocks and that, none of it worked. It wouldn't work. So <laughs> yeah. I was like, what, this is crap. I mean, maybe if you became really advanced at it, yeah. you know, I guess it's more with the discipline, movement, whatever. But it's not a very effective martial no. art. So I said, oh, I want to learn the boxing. So it was about 16 years I went in at college. I started doing the kickboxing, did well in there, and I got in some, uh, had a few fights kickboxing. Um, I even fought Bakir Fakuri on my very first ever boxing match. No way. Because, yeah, what happened is a guy pulled out. I sold loads of tickets and everything, but their guy pulled out, and I'd always said to my coach that I want to fight. So he's like, Jack, Jack, we need you. He rang me up. I just finished my exams, got my results. I remember there smoking some marijuana, drinking some beer in a car with my friends, celebrating my GCSEs. I got some good grades and everything. I said, yeah. They're like, Jack, Jack, we've got to fight for you. 
I mean, it's this Darren Chan, actually. He called me up. He's a top uh, fighter himself. He's Darren. He's like, chat. Come on, fight me. We need you. Come down. You say you want to fight, no. right? Yeah. Get down, get down here. So I was like, oh, wicked, wicked. So he's like, it's in Brighton. He's a good person. Like, you get about 300 quid. I was like, yeah, wicked, wicked. It's just three rounds, three two-minute rounds. You know, get down here. I was like, uh, kickboxing, yeah? I was like, oh, wicked, great, yeah. Get down there, went down there, put the, the joint down, put the beer down. <laughs> I'm ready to go, you know, quick stretch yeah. off, you know. Went down, you drift down to Brighton. Turned up, um, Darren's like, right, so the guy, right, he's uh, he's a bit stocky, okay? He's a bit stocky, but when he comes in, low kick, all right? Just use the low kick. So I'm thinking, okay, yeah, we'll use the low kicks, so no problem. I get in there when that walked out. Next minute he's walking out, I'm seeing the sight of him. And he's like a, a, a heavyweight. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my gosh, and imagine that I was quite skinny back then. I must have weighed about 62, 63 kgs. Wow. This guy's about 85 kg. You know, because it's hybrid kickboxing and match it more by height than weight. Right. You know, so there's not really, there's an unlicensed fight as well, so a bit dodgy. Yeah. Anyway, he comes out, I'm like, okay, right, he's just like, Darren's like, just low kick, yeah, right, just low kick. So you see, he'll blow out, we'll let him puff out. I'm thinking, okay, sure. So I ran in uh, and I fly kicked him. Next minute I'm there, I'm all sort of off balance. So I slipped down. He started laying into me. He's like, oh, yeah, he's realised this guy's no good. So he just started laying into me, heavy hands, put me down. I've gone down now. I'm thinking, oh, this is my first experience of, you know, being rocked and that. I'm like, oh, uh, I managed to get up, sort of recollect myself. It was uh, quite surreal. I got up. I was like, okay, yeah. Go, yeah, continue, sure. He sort of low kicked me, broke my ankle, like my wow. leg with the low kick, like smashed, snapped my leg. Then he uh, kicked me in body, and then I just went down again. Then and um, I was, yeah, the, the ref raved it off. And I remember I got up and went home, I limp, I was in her crutches for a couple of weeks and that. Oh. But then after that, I was not no scared. I had a few more. I thought, then it can't get any worse than that. Yeah. You know, um, then uh, I got into doing kickboxing, and then I, I joined the army. So I was away five years in the army. Oh, yeah. Obviously, I got a boxing team. So I joined a battalion boxing team, boxed with my battalion, did well on, on there. And then obviously, when I left the army, I decided to take it up as a semi-pro and then now uh, going pro with the, the bare knuckles. So that's kind of my journey. How it's been a long journey, quite a long 30 now. Right. So, about, you know, like about... 15 years of six, oh, 14 years of boxing really on and off had gaps in between and everything but <clears throat> yeah wow so, big journey oh, it's a, it's a, again, that I've, had, I've had nearly about over 40 fights probably nearly 50 fights now you know um amateur and white collar and stuff it seems to be a story of resilience through it from start to finish in your ar army career as well it seems like a story of resilience and that's what we saw in the first fight uh, your first yeah. fight, you, definitely because I, I thought you showed great heart, great resilience, and it was eventually the towel that came in from you, which I yeah, think is a right decision given the court, but you wanted to continue. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I, I didn't want to continue, but I, you know, you sell all those tickets, all your fans are yeah, there. Yeah. And when, I mean, when I went down the first time, I was like, uh, because he rocked me a shot on my chin, he, he and I went down from that, and then the pain was so bad. I was thinking, oh, this is horrible because he's hitting really hard. He's really fast. I can't move out the way of any shot. It's hard when you're in there, you know, and every shot you're throwing, you're yeah. getting countered, especially if the guy's not even wearing gloves. So I was down. I was thinking, oh, I don't really want it anymore. But I hear my people shouting. One of my sponsors was there, you know, Lelani E-Cycles. He was there. He was shouting in the American accent, get up, get up. And <laughs> he was at the front, you know, what like a big yeah, he's shouting at me, get up. And I'm thinking, I hear his voice, Lalani. And I was like, oh, damn, I've got to get up now. So I've got up and I'm a bit rocked, but I'm a bit okay. And my vision's coming back and that. And then obviously I said, yeah, let me continue. You know, I can't just quit. But that's what boxing's all about. Yes. In life, you face problems, you know. So boxing is about how can you overcome them? You know, it's in a physical way, but also mental. So I think boxing is a very good sport for that. One of probably the best sports for, like you said, uh, mental resilience. So, yeah, it, it was hard. Like I said, I thought, 
couple a couple times at the end of the second round, I kind of went down because I wasn't enjoying it anymore mm-hmm. to get beaten up. I kind of I wasn't really rocked, but he hit my nose. The pain, like I said, the pain. I couldn't really overcome the pain. I'm hoping I'll adapt to that possibly, or because it's my first time having that kind of pain, I wasn't used to it. So that's why I went down. Even not the second time, the third time, it was more the pain that because mm-hmm. sometimes guys go down screen of and I was from the pain. So yeah. it's the real tough fighters that get through, like the Sean Georges, you know, the um, you know, um, uh, you know, but he's a prime example because he overcomes the pain, mm. you know. So that's what it's all about. I like to try and overcome things, especially you know, like pain. I do things like I train a Mexican sparring where you eat a hot chili pepper <laughs> and you do a round. You know, you try to survive the round at a Scotch bonnet. I've oh, you know, heard you know, that one. It. So you do like a naga chili or a, yeah. a ghost chili, you know, or a scorpion chili. There's many levels of chili. You eat chili. that, you get the belly, but that prepares you for when you're gassed and things with the belly burn. But it doesn't, pre- nothing really prepares you for the pain in the head, or you know, if you get hit a body, you know. So you know, it's all it's all a learning experience. We've got many years to go, you know, so many fights to go. We'll get there eventually. Definitely. So something the key is not getting hit. That's the key. Yeah. Some people call him um, Sean gets his face rearranged every fight, George. Yeah. Um, you know, someone said that, I heard. That's what you don't want. Okay, it's good to be tough, but really, do you want to get hit like that? Mm. Not really. I don't like, some people say, oh, I like to be hit. Like, I don't know, maybe they're crazy, but yeah. <laughs> I personally don't like to be hit. No, of course not. At all, really. So just learning the footwork and that. You know, in and out, that sort of Sweeney fence, that's a very good style. You know, obviously got to adapt to that. Um, yeah, you want to keep them at bay. That's why like, you see the old fighters, they're, they're like this. Yeah. Because awesome. that's how you fight. You're away. You're not coming in. You want to be away, keeping them back. Yeah. You know, leaning back away and countering. So that's what you've got to practice. But like I said, it takes years to develop. So the theme you were touching upon there is that the, the big difference between someone on the debut and someone on their, you know, second, third, fourth fight. Now, your opponent, I believe it's his BKB debut. Do you think that'll have a, give you a big advantage given you've been in that ring? Yeah, I believe it is. I mean, I'm absolutely not underestimating him. I met him actually before oh, that at a, a, a white collar fight while I was fighting on and he was there with his team. And I saw him, I was like, oh, yeah, you're fighting me. We, we shook hands, nice fellow. Yeah, we did a little pose off and that. And, um, but I know he's fought in MMA, mm-hmm. so that's quite similar. I use, obviously, four-ounce gloves, mm-hmm. but it is similar. Although I have watched some of his MMA, he usually wins by submission. Okay. So I think they've gone for, so I don't know how great. I've seen him fight him, but I know it was a couple of years back. I don't know how many he's had before that or what, you know, who knows. So can't underestimate him. But I think, you know, when you start to feel it, you know, the knuckles landing on your eyes and your nose, you know, that's when you're going to be found out what you've got inside. So we'll see, you know, we'll see. Now, you said you spoke to him at the white collar event, shook his hand, everything was okay. At the weigh-in in two weeks' time, will there be a bit of needle like we saw with your former opponent? Um, a bit of yeah, I mean, I'm absolutely nothing against this. He's a nice character. Even new Ellis Shepard, the only reason why we kind of went like that is because, you know, I made some jokey videos, you know, and then he got really sort of upset about it, saying he's going to punish me and all of this. So we had a little back and forth. It's like, you know, bring it on, whatever. Then his fans started messaging me, saying all this sort of stuff to me and I'm thinking, who are these people? You know, what's wrong with them? Okay, I'll take a joke, whatever. But whatever, like, no hard, nothing bad. He made a good fight. But like I say, Patrick Nash, I think he's a great guy and I don't have any kind of problem with him. I'm not going to go and you know, push him at the way or any <laughs> crazy thing. Like, I'm more concerned about that Eric Olsen character. Yeah. You know, he's a satanic 
because, you know, I don't know what he's got in for me because obviously I'm a Christian. Okay. What if he targets me, you know, with it's some satanic spell? Attack. He could do satanic attacks. These are what these people do. You know, we've seen what he does on King of the Streets and gouging people's eyes and yeah. fighting. So I'm personally, I'm going to have to bring a, uh, I've got a holy water. Look. Oh, God, let's see. I've got some. A I've weapon. got this from a special convention. So I'll be carrying that on me in case he comes at me. You know, I can Good. throw it at him. And Barely also, I'll hopefully, I'll ask to be doing a way and away from him so we could be separated, you know, because I don't want to risk to myself. I know what he's like. He attacks people, fans, anyone who's said, like, I've said some jokey comments on some of his stuff. Yeah. But I don't know how he's going to take it. Maybe he's going to be really angry and attack me from behind, submit me, break my arm. He's a, you know, the guy's a big guy. So yes. I'm only 70 kg. He, he's like an 85, 90 kg. What if he tries to take me down, whatever, you know? So I'm going to be very wary of him at the way in you know more can, yeah and i'm not joking about that. you don't know these people yeah. i don't know him i know nothing against him but him being a satanic maybe he's going to attack me i don't know as a christian or, but, yeah. yeah he might do that i don't know i mean who knows but Keep just to be aware on. alert aware that's it alert staying alert staying aware your surroundings, what you've got to do, that's what boxing teaches. Yeah. You know, Being the ball ready for any eventuality. Yeah, um, that's it. Speaking of eventualities, there could be infinite things that could happen, assuming you don't get attacked yeah. by Eric Olsen and you make it to the ring safe and sound. Yeah. You will. How could you predict, could you predict a result with your opponent, Pat Nash? Yeah, I, I believe I will stop him. I believe that very strongly. In fact, I know that, um, you know, I'm not clairvoyant, but um, there's a pretty much certainty I'll be able to stop him, unless he is vastly superior to what I've seen in box, you know, mm -hmm. because I know my skills, you know, I know my heart. I've seen him fight and one guy sort of trips him up or something in a fight or whatever and he sort of goes down all complaining and all of this. Right. You know, those type of Fighters often, they're not really, really hard, whatever. If you're mm -hmm. complaining like me, I like to be rough. When I fight the glove fights, often yeah. use a backhand. I'll throw some low blows, use my shoulder, things like this, you know, throw some elbows in there, you know. And often see it. some fighters, they complain about that. Me, like even with us for Ellis Shepard, he was throwing some, you know, some sort of dirty shots. But I didn't complain about that. This is boxing you know, this is a rough sport. It's not, uh, you know, uh, taekwondo touching, you know, all of that. You know yeah. what I mean? This is a real a rough, rough game. Yeah, it's a fight. So right, it's a fight. these things happen. Obviously, it's a fair fight. I'm not saying I'm going to go in and try elbowing him or anything like that. No. But I'm just saying he might not have it inside. I don't know for sure, but I think well, I know I've got a very good shot power. Mm -hmm. Once I start landing and, you know, coming forward and he's going to not like it. He's going to be like, oh, what have I got myself into? You know, thinking he can just come into BKB. You know, I am BKB. The I'm the Athenian. BKB. So he's coming in there against the Athenian, the ancient Greek. I bring ancient Greek experience to the arena. You know, that's what this is. You know, we go in there for the crowd to put fights on so they can witness true gladiatorial combat because, you know, boxing has been going on ever since men started fighting, developing techniques, how to use your fists to strike most effectively. And that's how it's been for thousands of years until obviously the Queensbury rules came out about 100 years ago to, you know, have the gloves. So before that, you know, and ancient Greece was no different. Rome... You know, they were gladiators. gladiators. You know, you could be a slave or you could be a free man entering for the fun of it. Uh, you know, and that's what we are. We go in there, some of us because we need the money, others just because we like fighting, whatever. You know, and this is what it is. I think he seems the type of guy who 
he's like, oh, he's bored. He's been off, lay off for a while. And now what, he's going to step in after having not fought for two years, if going by what I've seen, what, he's going to step in and now have go into knuckle fighting. To me, that's just in, in crazy. You know, he should be swarming up, have a lot of fights. You know, me, I was fighting as I got into it. COVID, I was like, I need to keep active. So I was going up Manchester, doing some hay bale fights, you know, for like £500, keeping active you know, and just fighting in there. And even that, the first one, I was ill and the guy beat me. He was a tough guy, but I could have beat him otherwise. But I was ill, I actually did have COVID. OK, I came up with a whole load of other excuses as well. But mm-hmm. the real reason I lost that was because I had COVID. So oh, yeah. I wasn't ready. But when I started getting smacked up, you're going to feel it, you know, and then C starts landing. I, I mean, he's no Ellis Shepherd. Unless he's like been training with Ellis Shepherd the whole time secretly, then really he hasn't got a chance. Can the Athenian end the gladiatorial combat in under a round? Oh, I believe so. I believe so. I reckon he'll make it through, through he, because he don't want to give up so quick. He seems a good character, good heart. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure he's not just going to go and roll over. Mm-hmm. I'm not expecting that. I'm not expecting him to be like, oh, I'll go down. But I think, you know, when he starts hurting, I'll keep pressuring on him. You know, I've trained so hard for this. My last fight that I had, I uh, wasn't really training properly. I didn't take it seriously, you know, but this uh, BKB, I'll take it seriously. You know, I've very big aspirations for this BKB, very big vision. You know, I'm a big ticket seller. You know, I've got nearly a million followers on Instagram. You know, I'm a big time person, you know, so I, I'm coming in here to make waves, to come to, to make world titles. It's like what Sweeney said, if you're not here to, to be the best, it's no point coming That's in. Point. So what's this Patrick Nash coming in here for? To me, it seems he might have some kind of other outlying issues that this is like a sort of just an outlet. That's what I think. But I don't know. Mm. Who knows? Mm. But to me, it seems like, oh, he's been bored. Maybe he's like, oh, what am I doing? Let me do the BKB, give it a go. But that's not the attitude to have. I didn't come here to just give it a go. You know, I came here because I'm really the best. So just before we get on to the sponsors, the people you'd like to thank, Mm. have you got a final message? For your opponent, it sounds like you're confident. It sounds your motivations are there. Mm. Have you got a final word for Pat Nash? Well, I would just like to say by his name, you know, don't bite me. That's all I say. Because he's a Nash, that means like a teeth, doesn't it? (laughs) Yeah, it does. So to me, that's his only way he's going to win if he bites my ear off. And now I can't hear what the referee's saying and the referee disqualifies me now because I can't hear anything because he's bit in my ears. That's the only way he can win, biting both off my ears, biting out the eardrum, like, out of it. And then, um, and that's the only way. No, there's no other way he can win. But even once he bites one off, the referee should disqualify him immediately because I can survive one ear, but not two. So there we are, Pat Nash, no gnashing, keep it clean. And the Athenian will get to put you away. Take hands, we'll have a drink after. Once I beat him, I'll buy him a um, drink, not champagne, because yeah, I know yeah. that O2 is very expensive in there. Yeah, you it's know, crazy. But not that expensive, but for the champagne. Yeah, it's not worth it. Pound, £100, so no. But the beer, sure, three, four pound beer. We share a beer, you know. I'm I'm ancient Greek, so I'll drink wine. We share a wine. Well, That's it. God's. Right. Yeah. Oh, Dionysus. <laughs> we'll get on to now. The sponsors who you'd like to thank, the training camp, how things have gone. Thank you. Or the wrap up message for your sponsors. Yeah. So obviously, first of all, my main sponsor, Spot CO app. It's a new sporting application in its early stages, just getting going. But if you're an athlete, a sports person, download the app, Spoxio. It can help you to put in touch with promoters, promoters, 
um, other people in sport. Um, it's very good, good app actually, and they've helped me a lot. Um, and yes, I download them, and also my other sponsors, um, <clears throat> Handyman Desk. Um, a, a friend of mine down the road, he's got um, a handyman company in Thornton Heath, Croydon. If you need some rubbish picked up, anything, give Des a call. Say, you know, Jack McLean, the Athenian, he'll sort you out. Top prices, all around Croydon, rubbish clearance, little handyman jobs, anything you need. Give him a call. Also, my uncle's building firm, Sherakoriana Limited. That's S H E R I. C O R I A N A, Shara Coriana Limited. Check them out if you want to build anything from building a pyramid to breaking out a concrete slab. They will get the job done. And in this time, when this cost of living crisis, they will give you the yeah. best prices guaranteed. So check them out, Shara Coriana Limited building firm so those are my three sponsors right now we're hoping to get many more on board in the future if you, also a thank you to my team um at honor and glory boxing great team give them a shout get down the club professional and amateur boxing club top best boxing club i've ever been in in fantastic and if you are a business owner or a private individual who needs sponsorship this is the man who pulls the crowds who gets the attention of the people if you look at him last fight, you'll see, you'll know this is the man that people talk about. So get on him. How can people contact you via Facebook? Is that the best, Jack? Yeah, they can contact me by Facebook, Jack Leslie McLean, or, or uh, best is via the Instagram at McLean the Athenian. You can also add my fan page. That's Team Team Athenian fan page. That's a private page where I post all my fight camps day to day exclusive videos exclusive news prize giveaways and the likes lovely now this has been probably my favorite interview yeah. in the three years i've been doing interviews really enjoyed it great character thank it's you great for being on today and remember um, guys as they always say team athenian stay alert stay aware stay alert Stay alpha. Stay Athenian, boys. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've been Paolo Lucci. This is Jack McLean. Yeah, See you in two weeks. Thank you. See you in two weeks.